good morning. Good morning, okay. So my name is Joy Blomwini. I am the founder of the Algorithmic Justice League and as you heard, a poet of code. I tell stories that make daughters of diaspora's dream and sons of privilege pause. And usually when I say I'm a poet of code, people are like, what does that even mean? And I mention I'm an AI researcher. So to show you, I will start this talk with a poem that's also an algorithmic audit called AI Ain't I a Woman. And so hopefully you can see that now, AI Ain't I a Woman. My heart smiles as I bask in their legacies, knowing their lives have altered many destinies. In her eyes, I see my mother's poise. In her face, I glimpse my auntie's grace. In this case of deja vu, a 19th century question comes into view. In a time when Sojourner Truth asked, ain't I a woman? Today we pose this question to new powers, making bets on artificial intelligence, hope towers. The Amazonians peek through windows blocking deep blues as faces increment scars. Old burns, new urns, collecting data chronicling our past, often forgetting to deal with gender, race, and class. Again I ask, ain't I a woman? Face by face the answers seem uncertain, young and old, proud icons are dismissed. Can machines ever see my queens as I view them? Can machines ever see our grandmothers as we knew them? Ida B. Wells, data science pioneer, hanging facts, stacking stats on the lynching of humanity, teaching truths hidden in data, each entry and omission, a person worthy of respect. Shirley Chisholm, unbought and unbossed, the first black congresswoman, but not the first to be misunderstood by machines well-versed in data-driven mistakes. Michelle Obama, unabashed and unafraid to wear her crown of history, yet her crown seems a mystery to systems unsure of her hair. A wig, a buffant, a toupee, maybe not. Are there no words for our braids and our locks? Does relaxed hair and sunny skin make Oprah the first lady? Even for her face well known, some algorithms fault her, echoing sentiments that strong women are men. We laugh, celebrating the successes of our sisters with Serena smiles. No label is worthy of our beauty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So as you see, machines are not flawless and they reflect something that I call the coded gaze. Now how many have heard of the male gaze? the white gaze, the post-colonial gaze, well, to that lexicon, we add the coded gaze. And it is a reflection of the priorities, preferences, and at times prejudices of those who have the power to shape technology. I was first introduced to this while I was working on an art installation that used face detection. I found the system I was working with worked fine on my friend's face, but when it came to detecting my own face, I needed a little assistance. 
And so literally putting on a white mask to have my face detected led to some questions. And I shared the story of coding in a white mask on the TED platform. And I thought somebody might want to check my claims. Let me check myself. So I used my TED profile image and I ran that image through the AI systems of many different companies. Some didn't detect my face and the ones that did detect my face labeled me male. Now, this might seem like an inconvenience, and I wasn't too concerned until I started learning about police use of facial recognition technologies. And so in the U.S., more than one in two adults has their face in a face recognition network that can be searched unwarranted, unregulated, using algorithms that haven't been audited for accuracy. And in the U.K., where they have actually captured numbers, they're not so great. You have false positive match rates of over 90%. More than 2,400 innocent people having their biometric data collected without their knowledge. And you even have a case with two women being misidentified as men. And so given the consequences of facial recognition technologies, I focused my MIT research on trying to understand performance differences. And so this paper, Gender Shades, looked at gender classification, a type of facial analysis, from major companies. And so I really wanted to know, how accurate are the facial analysis systems from IBM, from Microsoft, and for Face++ or MegV, a billion-dollar tech company in China, when it came to guessing the binary gender? Now, if we look in aggregate, which tends to be how we evaluate systems, it might seem all right. Microsoft, 94%, maybe you get an A. IBM, 88, might be a B. 90% for face++ plus plus depends on the grading curve. Where it gets interesting is once we start to break it down. So when we look at the results by gender, we see in aggregate all of the systems work better on male-identified faces than female-identified faces. When we look at skin type, all of the systems overall work better on lighter skin faces than darker skin faces. Then we took it a step further, borrowing from legal scholar Kimberly Crenshaw to do an intersectional analysis. In anti-discrimination law, she saw the limitations of single access analyses and that you could see a more nuanced picture when you look at the intersection. So we did that breakdown, bringing Kimberly Crenshaw in, with intersectionality into computer vision. And so what do we see? Well, we see that perfection is achievable. For the group I affectionately call pale males, we have 100% accuracy. And then we see not so much for darker skin uh, women, and then we see um, the performance on lighter females and darker males. When we move to face++, plus plus, we see that the best performance is on darker, uh, darker males, which is why the intersectional breakdown is important. You cannot assume the same trends across different algorithms. But one thing remains, darker females have the worst performance. And then we look at IBM, pale males take the lead again. And when it comes to darker females, worse performing. But in this case, we see that there's better performance on lighter females than darker females. So this was the first study released in uh, 2018 after our audit the year before. And we did a follow-up. We wanted to see what happened a year later with the target companies. And then we included companies we had not audited initially. And so when we look at the aggregate results, which we know don't tell us the full picture, we see that the non-target companies are closer to where the target companies were the year before. So let's look at accuracy by gender. When we look at the targets, they all started to close that gender gap. When we look at the non-targets, they're closer to where we were the year before. Similarly, with skin type, we see that they're starting to close the skin type gap. But when we look at the companies, the non-target companies, closer to where we were the year before. And then we take the step of doing the intersectional analysis. And we see here the typical trend works best on lighter skinned men, works worse on darker skinned uh, females, is what we're seeing with the non-target companies, Amazon and Kairos. Then we also compared how the companies we targeted initially did uh, between the two audits. And so we see improvement for Microsoft overall. Uh, Face++ overall improvement, slightly worse on darker males than we had initially. And then with IBM, probably the biggest uh, improvement step we see as well. 
And so after conducting these studies, we sent the results to the various companies, and we had a range of responses. No response from Face++ Meg V. IBM uh, invited me to their headquarters. I worked with uh, their various teams. They released a new system, and Microsoft was uh, quite receptive as well. Amazon had a different approach. They attempted to discredit um, the research, and I was really fortunate that the research community uh, rallied behind this work, including some of the most respected AI researchers. We also, just last year, had a report from the National Institute for Standards and Technology where they tested 189 uh, different algorithms, and they confirmed our results, and they did it in a more comprehensive way, showing not just gender bias, racial bias, but also age bias as well, where these systems don't work as well on youthful faces or elderly faces. So basically, if you have a face, you have a place in this conversation, is what we're we're seeing. But even if we were to close these accuracy disparities, accuracy is not the only concern. As the speakers before me spoke to, we really have to be asking what kind of society do we want to be living in. In this example, we see that IBM worked with the police department and gave them capabilities to search videos by skin type. Not included on that slide, also facial hair. So here you can uh, create tools that automate uh, racial profiling, or if you think about putting facial analysis on lethal autonomous weapons, it's no longer a question about how accurate the system is, though that's part of it, but also what kind of systems do we want. So given that it's not just about accuracy, a major component of the Algorithmic Justice League is to put research into action. Part of that is through advocacy. I've testified at several hearings pushing for legislation either at the federal, state, uh, or local level. I serve on the EU Global Tech Panel, more so focused on restrictions for lethal autonomous weapons. And we also engage in creative science communication. So as you saw, I opened Open with the poem, AI, Ain't I a Woman? We've had over 12 art exhibitions around the world, not yet in Germany, so if anyone is interested, please let me know. Uh, we also create media, and uh, I am happy to share with this crowd that a film that follows the development of the Algorithmic Justice League will be premiering next week at Sundance, and I hope we can bring it to Germany as well. <laughs> So beyond just pointing out problems at the Algorithmic Justice League, we don't want to name and shame, we want to name and change. So in the spirit of actionable critique, actually providing steps to mitigate harms. So the Safe Face Pledge is one of these initiatives. We've had around 100 companies and individual champions sign on to say we want to show value for human life, dignity, and rights. We want to address harmful bias, facilitate transparency, and embed these practices into our actual uh, company processes. So if you have a company that's interested in facial analysis technology, if you are a per procurement officer thinking about maybe getting facial analysis technology, we highly encourage you to look at the Safe Face Pledge. And a final announcement, as of yesterday, we have launched the new Algorithmic Justice League website. So if you visit ajlunited.org, you'll be able to see many of these examples that I shared with our research, what we're doing on the advocacy side. You can learn more about coded bias and you can sign up for the Safe Face Pledge. So thank you for your time, appreciate it.